Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dinbandu Chaukshi, and I'm from uh, Association of Performing Arts of India. We welcome you to this uh, lecture demonstration and performance. First of all, I would like to thank Professor Scott Miller and Director of Cultural Affairs, Susan Barnett, and Visual and Performing Arts Department of Dhabhat College for inviting us to do this. This performance is made possible by a grant from National Endowment for Arts, and we want to thank NEA for that. It's my great pleasure to introduce the artist. His name is Prashant Shah. He is a senior disciple of Padma Bhushan Shribati Kumandini Lakhya and is one of the very few critically acclaimed male performers and choreographer. He is originally from India and now he is residing in New York City. He is a recipient of Sangeet Natak Academy Yuva Puraskar, which is a national award established by President of India. And now he is a resident of United States and he has his own dance company, having performed over 40 countries. Prashant is regularly commissioned by international choreographers involved in other dance styles such as hip hop, belly dancing, flamenco, Bharatnatyam, modern and contemporary dance as a dancer and choreographer. He has performed all over Europe, North America, Asia. He has received rave reviews in New York Times, The Guardian, The Independent, San Francisco Chronicle, Dancing Times, The Star Ledger, Voice of Dance and many more. Prashant is a student, he is a teacher, he is a performer, he is a choreographer. Before I invite him, I have a few announcements. This artist is going to perform tomorrow along with many other artists and musicians at the Broward Center for Performing Arts at 7 p.m. at MH Hero Theatre. We have a special ticket for the students for dollar fifteen. If you want to purchase the ticket, it's available outside at the desk. Before you leave, it is very important, please fill out the survey. It is required by any year. If you want to be on our mailing list, please fill out the form that is available outside. Now please welcome Prashant Shah. Let's make it very casual and informal uh, because I am really seeing some great interested people over here on this Friday evening. Uh, so that's, I'm really honored for that. Uh, G, is it possible if I just speak here and is it catching my sound, my voice? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, that's better. I prefer that. Let's give this a little bit of rest. Good evening, everyone. I'm Prashant, as introduced by Uncle. I'm really honored to be here at the Broward College. And of course, thankful to Bharti Ben, Choksi, uh, Uncle, that is the Association of Performing Arts of India, and to be here at the college, the great department. I've always heard about this college. I go to various colleges in, on the East Coast, like Rutgers 
and uh, MIT for different lectures. So it's uh, again my honor to be at one of the other presenters in the United States. <coughs> Give you a brief introduction of Kathak. I'm sure some of I can see some of uh, my uh, country fellow friends here, and I'm really delighted to talk to them also. So we'll, we'll I just give a brief introduction about Kathak if people are not familiar with it. Uh, Kathak is one of the Indian classical dance forms, which comes from the north of India. Because, first of all, let me just clear up a few things. When we talk about Indian dance in the West, suddenly people just think of Bollywood dancing. You know, so, no offense to that for sure. But, definitely Indian dance is not just Bollywood dance. Because the kind of uh, exposure we all have it to the films. So people always think, okay, let's go to this Indian dance, and so they expect all these kind of things, you know. So, there's nothing wrong in it, for sure, but it's, the purpose is different. You know, you have, to, you have to define the purpose for what we are on the stage, or if I'm in the audience, for what I'm going for. So, the purpose is very important. So, let me just speak a little bit about Kathak. It's one of the Indian classical dance forms from the north of India, and uh, the word Kathak itself has its own meaning. Katha which means, literally means story. And I would say a couple of thousand centuries ago, there was a community which was called as Kathakas. And the community had one job. They used to travel from one town to another town, let's say every weekend. And they used to dance when they reached the next place. And which the dance was having either the mythological stories or some news. There was no electronic media. There was no media in fact. Forget about electronic media. You know, so that was the main purpose of their dancing. To entertain people when they were dancing mythological stories or any dance dramas. But basically it was done for the news. They used to go to the other town and then they used to dance and then they used to entertain and then in between they used to, they would do something uh, you know, if some, uh, I would say, some natural disaster has happened, so they will create a dance drama where, you know, that kind of uh, mood or the movements are created. So basically, Kathak word comes from the word Kathaka, an art of storytelling. Like any other Indian dance forms, it has also various school of thoughts. We have Lucknow Garana. Jaipur Gharana. Gharana means a school of thought. It belongs to a particular school. Like, we all know that India has gone through various, you know, social political influences down a couple of centuries, you know. So, Kathak was not left out as well. When Mughals invaded India, there is a state in the north, uh, which is called Uttar Pradesh, in the north of India, which got influenced and which was ruled by Mughal emperors. So that particular style, which I also do that style of Lucknow Garana, it got influenced by, to please the kings who were residing at that time over there. So the dancers who were dancing for the kings, they, they involved a lot of fast footwork and they involved a lot of spirits which is a very, very exciting part of Kathak dance form. The purpose was very simple, to please the king. So that to, to please and to get more, you know, money from him and appreciation, whatever we call it. So that was the purpose for that. But Jaipur, the city which belongs to the state Rajasthan, which is in the west of India, was not that influenced by the Mughals. So if you see the two styles, uh, anywhere from now on, you know, if you go to any Kathak performance, a very traditional Kathak performance, you can always ask the dancer or choreographer later on, was this style a Lucknow or a Jaipur? Because if you see Jaipur, it has, it has, of course, a lot of footwork is there, a lot of pirouettes are there, but there is less influence of the Mughal period in that dance form. 
and I'm sure you can figure it out that. And uh, basically, it's that uh, the traffic is all you know. But we have we have grown in our life. We all need to grow. We like to change ourselves. And I personally, coming from a school of thought, my guru is Kumudini Ben, Kumudini Lakya. She is one of the pioneers who introduced various movements, new movements to the Kathak repertoire. And she was solely responsible, she is rather solely responsible to bring dynamism in Kathak form and to introduce the group choreography in Kathak and to introduce the daily routine challenges what we issue, what we have in the Kathak form and create new numbers. So the style of I do Kathak is all about uh, using the space, not just limiting myself to one square because that was done a couple of uh, centuries ago because they were, they were hardly having some, you know, in, the, in front of the temple they dance, so it was just this space. So they used to dance to that time. But we all grow and we need to grow. That's what my teacher has taught me. So that's, I don't like to limit myself and I don't want my culture to be framed in a particular definition that, okay, this is right and this is wrong. You know, we need to accept what is happening around us. And that's what, uh, I, as uncle has mentioned, tomorrow if you guys are free and if you guys are interested, of course, then please do join us tomorrow for our performance. Kathak performance is there, Flamenco is there, and we have, we are trying, still trying to bring those two styles together and create something interesting. So that's for tomorrow evening, I think it's at uh, Robert Center, right? Yes. Yeah. Anyway, and I will not speak much now because we all can Google and know more about Kata, you know, at home. And I, I don't want to sound very boring right now. <laughs> this evening I'll present three different numbers. The first number which I'm going to present is repertoire of a Kathak traditional technique which involves each thing what a Kathak dancer might do for a one and a half hour program. I have tried to limit it in six minutes. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not going to be fast and I'm running around and jumping around for no reason. But I'm going to do everything uh, I'll take a few different things from Kathak, as uh, we call it, we have thar. The first thing what we do it in a Kathak performance, I would like you to know this, if I have a one and a half hour evening, which I do many times, I will start my program with an invocation, like any other Indian classical dance form, they do it, to Lord Ganesh or to Krishna or to Shiva, to anyone, any god, goddess, or to the Guru. Then the section which comes in after it's tha. Tha is the way of standing. The first thing what a dancer has to come and do it on the stage is to show the stance. How you take the stance on the stage. That's called tha. Second, what we do is, is arm. Amat is literally, it literally means to enter the proceeding. So before that the dancer always just does it very subtle movements of stance like this, this, very subtle. But the moment Amat comes in, we explore the space and we give the feeling as if the dancer is using the space evolving through the movements. Then there are various other technical aspects in the performance are like tihais. Tihais are like the footwork which we repeat a rhythmic structure with the feet three times which I'm sure you all have you know, heard it even in the musical performances. And then there are tukras, tukras meaning various rhythmic structure which involves the total body involvement. So I'm going to present all these things in the six minutes and the, the piece which I'm going to show is called Akar. Akar meaning shape. Trying to create various shapes of the Kathak repertoire 
not like shapes making squares and circles and triangles like that. <laughs> not too obvious. <laughs> but it's, that's the piece which I'd like to present, which is a very, very traditional technical piece. So I'll present Akar first. And at the, after that, I'm going to show one number, which is expression, all about expression. I'll speak about that once I'm done with this. And then, please don't leave, because the third one, I'm going to involve and invite some of you guys on the stage, and I'm going to teach you a few Kathak movements, and we are going to have fun on the stage. Yeah, so please don't leave, after listening to this also. <laughs> Let's challenge ourselves at the end. So, G, can we have the first track? Thank you. Aka.